Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Alyssa Corum here, and I'm joined by Justin Nielsen. And Justin, it was a pretty ugly day in the market, uh, but go ahead and give us a quick preview of the three stocks we're going to be chatting about that had uh, some standout action today, all things considered. Yeah, so we'll definitely talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the difference between swing trading and position trading and how that might have affected your decisions today. But there were a few stocks that um, are setting up still, uh, two that were positive, uh, BJ's Wholesale, uh, symbol BJ, Teladoc uh, Health was down a little bit, but that looks like mm -hmm. it's setting up. And then Chewy Support was up uh, today. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. All right, but first, a look at the major indexes. Here's a chart of the NASDAQ. We saw the tech heavy index falling about 2.2% for the day. The Dow closed down 2.7% on the session and the S&P 500 down 2.6% for the day. So Justin, put this in perspective for us. Was yesterday's action in hindsight a little bit of a warning sign here? Absolutely. I mean, you know, whenever you have a, a close at the bottom part of your trading range, um, you know, that's, that's called a downside reversal. And, you know, it, it's something that you expect weakness to follow. However, um, I will say one caveat with yesterday's action is that on the NASDAQ, we were still closing well above mm -hmm. 10,000. We were up three quarters of a percent. So it definitely wasn't stalling, you know, because usually that's something where you don't make much price progress. So it, it was really kind of borderline in terms of uh, you would expect some weakness and we got that today. But mm -hmm. um, again, if you're a position trader, uh, looking at a lot of the positions like we were doing on leaderboard today, there's really not much reason to panic. I mean, we, we kind of expected that we would go in a little bit of a trading range. In fact, we were kind of hoping we would do that. Um, the market has been so strong, it has just kind of completely ignored all of our thoughts of potentially flattening out for a little bit and it just continues right. to go higher. But you know, we did break out into new high ground yesterday, um, pulled back below 10,000 today. So, you know, again, we, it would be very normal for us to kind of enter into a little bit of a trading range. We've got that rising 21 day moving average line, uh, the green line on your, on your screen. Um, that could be a nice place to get support. That's where we've been getting support all along the way up. So that's, that's my first line in the sand looking for support for this market right now on the NASDAQ. All right, well, let's flip on over really quickly to uh, what we were talking about this morning on IBD Live. This is a five minute chart here. So the day starts here. Walk us through um, the game plan for what you guys were looking at right at the beginning of the session. Well, and Mike Webster kind of, you know, he's our head market strategist and he kind of brought up that, you know, you would expect some weakness uh, going into day, today. Now, it was starting to look like things were just fine. Um, you know, we were in fact on swing trader taking profits on a few things. Um, but then uh, news came out that uh, coronavirus spikes in a lot of states, uh, mm -hmm. especially our, our state here of California, um, that kind of threw markets a little bit. And so you saw that decline. And so we were kind of talking about this real time as it was happening. We saw the NASDAQ composite undercut its lows for the day. And that's where we were saying, hey, you know what? If, if, you, if you need to take some defensive action, again, if you're a swing trader, that's where you're gonna be taking you know, more aggressive action because you probably haven't been holding on to things for very long and you don't have much cushion. However, if you're a position trader, that's where you're starting to look at your weaker stocks, um, see if you need to reduce exposure just to kind of get yourself off margin because the expectation a lot of times is um, that you're gonna have some weakness continue. So um, at least another day of weakness would be completely normal here. Um, but then the good news is uh, keep stocks on your radar, on your watch list because we might see reversals if we do get support at the 21 day line again. Um, that has been a great opportunity in the past month or so uh, for new opportunities for purchases. Or yeah, ads. that's such a good that's such a good point. You gotta look for those opportunities during this time instead of just feeling and, and that it, panic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard. It's hard. And um, I, I think uh, Arusha was talking about that today too. It's you know it's hard to remember as you're seeing all of these stocks come in and you're 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 looking at the money that you're losing in your account um, that you really should be kind of keeping an eye on those stocks that are setting up, potentially mm -hmm. getting support at you know, the levels that we tend to look at. All right, well, let's look at one bright spot in the market today, and that is BJ's wholesale shaking off some pressure today, finishing in the green up about 1.7%. A little bit of an upside reversal here, Justin, and this one has been uh, holding up nicely after that powerful earnings gap. Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the earnings gap really kind of put this in a different 
different uh, different category. You know, BJ's is, you know, it, it tends to be one of those slower moving names. I mean, it can definitely pop on its earnings reports. Um, you had a 21% move on that day. And uh, a lot of that is, again, people are considering this a little bit of a coronavirus play. They have okay. seen additional traffic as people were kind of stocking up on supplies, especially, you know, filling up their pantries. So, you know, they were benefiting from this. There's a few stores that have been doing that. Uh, Walmart, Target are among some others. Um, so when you see something strong like that uh, on the earnings report, uh, if, you, if you miss it, that's okay. You just wanna keep it on your radar for a potential uh, another entry. And that's kind of what I, I feel like we're getting right here is you've had this consolidation. Um, in fact, we were actually looking at this as a potential swing trade as we got that reversal right at the 21 day. Um, it was a little bit tough because that reversal wasn't quite as strong, but now, you know, we, we got a little bit of a pullback yesterday. Uh, today was strong. That's kind of making it look more yeah, it, it's making it look better because of that relative strength versus the market today. And so when you see those, those stocks kind of buck the trend of the market, uh, those should definitely be on your radar as long as they have the sound fundamental, uh, fundamentals behind them. And this last earnings report yeah. definitely looked like a turnaround, um, you know, a huge, huge earnings um, uh, beat and, uh, yeah. you know, really good sales. So uh, it does, mm -hmm. you know, it does matter whether or not this can continue. This is kind of a one-off right now. Um, but right now it's, it's, it's looking strong. Yeah. Uh, and where's the entry here? Are you looking forward to cross uh, yesterday's high or? Yeah, that, that, that could be, that could be an easy, I mean, you could even argue that today was, you know, a potential one hmm. just because of the fact yeah. that it was, you know, closing so strong um, as it was pulling back. I would say that that wasn't enough of a pullback, you know, the, the last two days. So yeah, I, I would look at yesterday's um, high as a, as an early entry. All right, and moving on, let's check in on Teladoc. This has been one of the strongest names that we've we've been keeping an eye on throughout this rally, and it's been setting up over the last uh, couple of months here. Finally, tested a new entry a couple days ago, and even though it's seen losses for the past two days, it's been a very quiet pullback, I'd say. Yeah, and you know you could even look at the 196.19 uh, as kind of a double bottom entry. So again, we add 10 cents. Uh, that gives us our, our buy point there. Um, and yeah, you're tracing out exactly that W shape that you you tend to see in the double bottoms. Um, now here again, you know there's a fundamental story here that has to do with the coronavirus because uh, why why go to the doctor when you can just visit your doctor over the the phone or on video? Um, it's it's really convenient. I mean we have our own uh, uh, e-health type thing that we use here at the office. And I've used that a number of times. I did use Teladoc when we had access to that. Um, and this is one of those kind of like Zoom where you just wonder, even after the coronavirus fears subside, is this something that people are just going to get used to and say, you know what, why, why go to the doctor when I can do it over the phone or, or over video? So um, this pullback, very nice, very orderly. If you had gotten in at that early entry at the double bottom, um, you're still up on the position yeah. uh, just barely. And if you did get it um, as it was kind of crossing that all-time high, um, this pullback is still very mild. And so uh, again, if it pulls back a little bit more, that could even be better. If you're wanting to do an entry, you'd be looking for that reversal. All right. We'll keep an eye out for a potential reversal on that one then. And last but not least, checking in on Chewy ticker CHWY. And what do you think of this one, Justin? We did see Chewy finish up about 1.7% for the day. Uh, had a pretty strong move over here back uh, in early June, and it's been a uh, trading a, a little bit sideways since then. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and I would say that, you know, that, that right side of the base where it kind of went straight up from the bottom of 3665, um, that's not something that we tend to like very much because when something goes straight up from the bottom like that, you almost expect some type of pause. Now we did get that pause right here. <laughs> and so now, again, one of the things that kind of was interesting about this one is on a, on a big down day in the market, this one managed to trade up for the day. Um, they did just have a, a, a consumer conference a presentation that they did, a Jeffrey's Consumer Conference presentation yesterday. Um, that's something I, I plan on checking out uh, their, their investors relations website to kind of see what they said at that. But this is one that's been on our radar for a while. You can see that the relative strength is very strong. And this is one of those that's created kind of this loyal following. And so um, while they don't have earnings yet, uh, they do have strong sales and you just kind of wonder, you know, as much as people love their pets and they, they kind of make a habit of getting 
you know, the, their, their pet food or whatever delivered on kind of a schedule. So a lot of things that kind of make it habit forming, um, you know, is that something that could make this uh, a, a stock to look at in the future for earnings? Um, or again, is it actionable right now, even without right. the earnings because of that strong story and strong sales growth? So I'll be interested in taking a look at that Jeffrey's Consumer mm -hmm. Conference uh, uh, on, on their website as soon as I can. But you would consider this still actionable within this 5% yeah. buy range here. Exactly. It, it went right back into the buy range and that kind of makes it, um, uh, in fact, a little bit more interesting to me because, uh, again, I, I had missed this one. Um, again, that move straight up from the bottom made me a little bit too nervous. And so this is kind of giving me another chance uh, mm -hmm. at, at this stock. All right. Well, those are three stocks for your radar. And we're going to be talking about a lot more tomorrow morning on IBD Live. We're going through, what, at least 25 maybe more uh, stocks a day on our, on our morning live stream, Justin? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, I mean, we, we try to hit as many stocks as we can. Not only that, but we're trying to answer questions, um, mm -hmm. you know, as, as, as well. So, you know, stocks that people well, bring up. Well, 25 pretty in depth. Yes, really in, depth, in depth, right, exactly. Yeah. And, and then, of course, we have the lightning round that uh, yeah. uh, David, David Hatman Chung introduced. Um, so <laughs> we try to get to as many stocks as we can. But more importantly, you know, as, as good as the stock ideas are, I think sometimes it's that strategy kind of oh, yeah. uh, discussion. So we talked a lot about strategy today. We were talking, you know, Chris came on from his uh, vacation, you know, showed mm -hmm. his obsidian, you know, rock hounding that he had done, <laughs> um, but also yeah. talked a little bit about what he was doing in terms of hedging. Uh, his portfolio mm -hmm. because of the weakness that we were seeing. So it's not just about the stock uh, ideas. Yeah. It's also about that overall strategy. Um, you know, it, whether you're a swing trader, which again, you might've been doing mm -hmm. some more aggressive selling or like on our leaderboard product, we didn't take anything off today because, you know, we have good profits on a lot of our stocks. And so it just wasn't necessary as, as bad as the day looked, yeah. our stocks looked like they were holding up. Okay. So again, that strategy is, is very key on IBD Live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a ton of great perspective and looking at things from multiple viewpoints. Yeah. So uh, you get a little little taste of everything. Uh, how, how the team is handling things. We hope you join us. Uh, check out more information at com slash IBD Live. But that's it for today. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow.